Doctor e tutta post, welcome back to a new episode of CNC++ Libraries. And what is CNC++ Libraries? It's a set of C++ platform abstraction libraries for macOS, Windows and Linux, focusing on fast compile times, being bloat-free, simple and readable and easy to integrate with no use of the C++ standard library exceptions and other party dependencies. So we use operating systems APIs to be free of dependencies. That being said, you can check the project on GitHub. There is all sort of documentations. There are some samples. There's a lot of tests. There are sections where you can get in touch and there's a Discord and all of the usual suspect for um, social networks where you can contact me and get in touch for the project. That being said, let's try to see what we are going to do today. So this video is a continuation of the video from previous, um, yeah, previous video, basically. And I have been implementing this async readable stream that was not complete in the sense that we kind of have been bringing it to the point where this, this was able to do some sort of synchronous operations, but we want to make it such that it will do async operations. And also we would like to try implementing also a writable stream because that's what will start to be useful. So, um, what can I do? Should I start? Yes. One thing, so let, let's try, I would start from trying to implement the um, async test. So async streams test. I will, oh, we also have all the code here that this will need to be moved into some something like async streams.h. So I'm creating um, void readable async stream. So I would like to create uh, another variation of the sync stream test and make it asynchronous and make the test pass. How do we do that? The first thing, I think we can keep the overall. So what is this test doing? Because I, I think I promised last time to be able to explain what this is doing. This test is basically creating a bunch of buffers and we can start to see how the API works. I get, I think I need to improve it a little bit, make it a little bit more usable, but I like how this um, is completely allowing you to avoid any kind of allocations and or more precisely, it's it's putting the allocations in the, the the in the hand the decisions of what you allocate in the hands of the caller. So you are creating a series of buffer views, which are just spans of bytes. So you can, in this case, I'm using a heap buffer. I mean, you could use a malloc, new anything you want. You fill these uh, buffers. Um, and so this is like the, a set of fixed buffers that will be used by the stream. You create um, a buffer ID queue, needs to be at least as big as the num buffer array. And you are passing it to this buffer pool, which is, let's say, the allocator for buffers. It's not really an all allocator, it's just, you know, tracking the empty and use it, not use it buffers and so on. So what we are doing is, of course, we are listening for errors for the test and we create this custom stream. To do a custom stream, we implement this async read. This async read is our custom async operations. It gets invoked every, every time we need to do a read and it will not be invoked again until we do a push. Okay, that's, that's more or less the, the point. In this case, we are doing a synchronous, uh, synchronous, not asynchronous, a stream so we just generate some data and we push it to the stream by requesting a buffer if there is no buffer this will be pausing and uh, in this case we are just pushing a piece of memory that is just an integer we are assigned the inter integer that we are in incrementing from 0 to 100 and once we are below you know above the, the maximum we just push hand which is a signal to say hey the readable stream is ended there is no more data here. So we add the listener for the event data. The event data is the one that the client, the event that the client is listening to. And that provides, you know, the 
data that arrives from the stream. So we check that all the data arriving here is what we expect. We put it into this integers array and that's it. So for a synchronous case, this is, uh, uh, this is pretty simple. And value is okay. This is better. Um, but for the async case, we need to do something different. So how do we transform this into an async test? Um, the first thing I need to do is including the asynchronous AO library, which is called SC async. And it's in the async, actually it's in the same module um, we are in right now, in the same library. So I want to create uh, an async timer, which is called loop timeout. Should I call it timer, async timer? Probably yes. Timeout, timer. I need an async um, event loop, loop, loop. Let's call it event loop, it's better. Event loop, event loop dot in it. Uh, create, yeah, sc try, no. SC test expect, we are in a test. SC test expect, so you know we can register any failure that can happen. Um, once we create that, we I think I need to grab it into the context. So my context now has uh, async event loop, event loop, and I can say event loop. Should I put it earlier? Probably yes. Yeah, let's do like this. Okay, we have the event loop. Unknown type name coid. What is a coid? All right. Now we have the event loop here in the context. We can use it. So instead of pushing it here, basically all of this bunch of data becomes like context dot uh, event loop. Actually, I also need the timeout. So probably the timer needs to be here. Yeah. Timer dot start context dot event loop timeout uh, one millisecond. How do you specify this? I don't remember. I think loop timeout. Let's see. It's, oh, there's a lot of documentation. We need a time milliseconds. Okay. So we have a time milliseconds. One millisecond. Ignoring return value. Ah, we can return this. And I need to say context.timer.callback is, what is my callback? Mm, I can set it outside probably, it's easier. So my callback is here, right? I need to initialize the timer here, okay async loop timeout result in the async library every um, every asynchronous operation gets a result object and this result object is uh, passed to the callback so i don't think i need the result object because i'm not rearming this yeah let's do let that's all right so in the callback, I will need to do the exact same stuff that I was doing here synchronously. And you see that we decoupled basically the pushing operation from, from the, let's say, receiving of the read command. So someone is telling us, hey, you have to read data, but we don't have that data. You know, we, we need to, you know, wait for some time. In this case, we have a, an asynchronous timer. And this um, is exactly what we need to, to wait for, waiting for the callback. And once the callback is invoked, it will push and then reactivate. 
All right, the remaining part looks decent. Value is okay. I can try to now add this to the list of tests. Maybe I'll add it first for now so that I will be hitting this test first. Okay, this will clearly not work for a number of reasons. One can be because we are not even running the event loop. So we should start. Now it will not be ended. I think now we have to event loop dot run. And once this is run, this becomes ended and we can check the result. This looks a good way that we can use to check if everything is all right. Unexpected state. Okay, so now we have to start fixing things that are not really doing what we expect. So here we are in state, which state? If you remember, we are in the async reading. Uh, do I have my old uh, visual online visual paradigm? Yeah. That's the website that I used, unknown error. Oh, fantastic. Can I see? Yeah, I have some weird email that I used, disposable email. I don't like giving my email to these websites. Um, where is document? My documents? Oh, folder is empty. Fantastic. <laughs> it has been deleting my oh recent document. Is this the one? Okay. We have async reading and async pushing. And, and we are in async reading. Why? Because um, as per our previous video, when we are receiving, uh, where is it? I think it's here that we are doing it. Yes. Um, when we are exiting the read and, and we see, okay, we are still in the reading phase, then still in reading phase, phase, let's go async. And this is uh, okay, we need to loop. Okay. So maybe I will add better comments. But for now, I think this is what's happening. So we are being put into this async reading mode. And so we arrive in the async reading mode here. So case state async reading. And as you can imagine, the state becomes a state async pushing because someone is calling push on on some on on the stream that is in async reading mode. So we were reading, which is the let's say the moment from which we get the our read operation called. But and, and now we are in the moment in which the the data is available and we are pushing it. So once we are in the pushing state, we can push probably multiple times. It's so weird that Xcode is indenting things like this. I don't know why, but, um, but okay, I guess I can, can make this work with enough tab. So we can push again and again, and we will still be in pushing mode. Once we are in pushing mode, should we emit data? Probably yes. Okay, so we emit data. Is this all we need? Probably not. We are not ended. Why? Because, let's see, are we even arriving here? No. How many times are is our event data getting called? Just one? Yeah. We are getting called just one. And I suspect the reason is because we don't do anything here on the reactivation. We only have the synchronous case covered. I remember from last time we said, I'm going to implement this asynchronous case later and later is now. So 
So here we can say we are in state uh, async pushing. We must be in state async pushing, otherwise we cannot uh, reactivate. If actually everything else should be an error. So let's say, yeah, let's say emit error wrong state for reactivate. Okay. Oh, I hate this way of indenting. That <laughs> Xcode has decided now to to do by default. Sometimes it just I, I think it corrupts the state of this indentation and it goes crazy like this. So if to reactivate we go back in state reading. If not, we just go back to state can read in the same way as sync pushing. So in the same way as we go during regular sync mode. Let's see if this is any better. Uh, is this invoked at least more than one? No. So we are not looping. Okay, so we arrive here and see what happens. We arrive in reactivate, do reactivate, we go in state reading. So we break. Uh, what am I doing wrong? I suspect I'm missing some. So reactivate is putting it in state reading. Uh, so who should be delivering one more read? Uh, Oh, I guess we need to execute read here. Okay, result. So we, we need to execute read because at some point, at this point when we are here, we are outside of the, of, you know, every context uh, regarding the async read. We are in a callback of, that is called from somewhere, possibly on the same thread. But we are not, we are outside of this uh, while loop that was so useful for the synchronous case. So we need to execute read again. And if execute runs uh, returns false, I mean, should this even be returning something? Probably not, it should be void. Yeah. Yeah, because this is emitting error. It doesn't need to return anything, so. Yeah, I'll just be executing the read. No conversion. Return result true. Okay. Let's try to see. So we get it called the first time, reactivate second time. Oh, this is looking much better. So remove the breakpoints, start. And the test succeeded. Yeah. Okay, that's that's promising. Um, probably we are not covering all possible cases, but that's that's already a good start. So I'm I'm happy. Um, shall we try to implement the writable side? So. Okay. I think I see, I have also seen a few things that I wanted to fix even before starting the video that I, you know, figured out that I have been missing from previous one. I think one was, we are not, where is it? We are not setting, yes, this one, the number of references to one when allocating the buffer. Actually, I don't like get new buffer. It should be, I don't know, request new buffer. Yeah. 
So request new buffer and the other problem that I have seen, but I, you know, I've seen it. I decided, okay, I'll just correct it during my video is we are not resizing the buffers. So, you know, we are allocating in the test, for example, we are allocating buffers that are 512 bytes, but we are writing just four bytes or eight bytes because it's the size of size D and there is nowhere saved. We are no in saving. We are not saving the information that that's the size of the buffer. So I think I need to maybe here request new buffer. Once we have the minimum sides, I should be changing the size of this buffer, I suspect. Uh, data and the new sides, minimum sides. But I need to back up this one, right? Because otherwise, when recycling this buffer, this is not going to work. So I can keep an original data. Yeah. So Okay, let's do let's do like this. I will be writing the original data from the data here. And resize it and return it. Yes. Then when unwrapping, when the buffer is if buffer refs is zero, buffer data equals buffer. We restore it basically, original data. This looks decent. So I should be able to, in the event data, just use data dot I mean, I can assert SC test spec that size of T is exactly data dot sides in bytes. Okay, let's see. Maybe I can add it also here. Um, Oh, this is not working now. Okay, so this means we are we are messing up with the reference count. Yes, we are not doing the proper ref counting. Correct, because I think that's the problem is here. Let's see if I remove this line, this is going to work now, right? Yes. Um, okay. Where do I put the reference count increments? I think we need to increment the reference count when we know we have been queuing a buffer. So get, so you can basically say buffers ref buffer buffer ID. And when emitting data here, buffers, unref buffer buffer ID, but we need to do it after the user has done whatever they want to do in the event data, right? So this to me looks correct. Where are we doing on ref buffer? Just here. Are we ever hitting this data? Refs equals zero. No. Ref buffer. Hmm. 
Um, all right. So, okay, so if we make the rule such that everyone that does a ref needs to be responsible to do the unref, this also means that we need to request an unref from anybody that is doing the request new buffers, which means anybody that is calling get buffer or pause. So this means that if you get a buffer and then you push it, then you are also responsible for, yeah, for decrementing that that user ref count. Okay. On ref buffers. So here we are getting our buffer that has reference count one. Here we need to decrease it and make it buffer on ref buffer buffer ID. Does it work? No. What am I doing wrong? Why does it need, you know, it doesn't like. Oh, wait a minute. I have two tests here now that are running. I need to do it both sides. Okay. Now it works. Excellent. I don't like to have that many test expect here. So, well, I can change it later because otherwise you, you know, it says that you have four, 400 and whatever number of expectations that is a little bit too high. We don't need to, I mean, we can just do a bull and flag here and just test expect it at the, the very end. But for now that that's all right. I will, I will clean up this test a little bit. Maybe also, you know what? Is that the listener I don't like because you need to put the entire lambda in parentheses? I should probably add like an operator plus something like this event operator with the lambda and so on. But I will do it later. I mean, I don't want to do it now because I have already made a very long video last time. I don't want to <laughs> do the same today. Uh, hopefully. So this is good. Let's see, do we have how much time? Yeah, this was half an hour. We can try drafting the writable. Even if I don't make it full, I can even finalize it offline or or make it uh, or make it in the next next video, why not? So let's but let's try. Wide writable a um, stream at this point there is no async async because uh, there is not really a way in which i can test it actually i, I think i will um yeah i will test by manually invoking the the signal of like write operation that is finished which i can i can explain what what am i meaning with this once I start writing the test, let's just give this writable stream test a function to run. And we also need to add it to the here. For now, I mean, this one, I can move it down. Uh, I can say writable, writable stream. Writable stream. The writable stream state machine is a lot easier. I didn't even have to create a state machine because it's I identified like three, four states. Um, so let's say, oh, and in, in the readable, there is also a bunch of stuff that I'm, I still have not implemented, like the proper pause and destroy. But yeah, you know, I will do it. I can either do it offline or I can do it once I know I will do the pipeline thing, which I'm going to do for now, bear with me. And let's try to do this SC. Um, so it's, uh, where is it? Yeah, I need to create another namespace. So namespace SC struct async writable stream. 
I'm going to have some events. So we have an event num listeners uh, static const text and num listeners equals five. I don't know. So one will be on error. So in the same way as the readable side result. Another one would be, I mean, these are the same as Node.js. Node.js has a on drain, which is an event sent when the writable stream is drained. So it's, it's, it's sent when the, when there is nothing to, the queue is empty. And so you can resume the reading side. So you can resume pushing data on drain. And what other event do we have? Um, we have unfinished, which is called when the stream is finished, which means someone has called the uh, end method. So we have an end method for sure. We have a um, write. Write takes, in this case, a buffer ID. Buffer ID and a callback that signals when this data is, has been written. Async buffer view ID. I'm going so fast at you know creating this API because I'm coping what Node.js is doing. You know, it's inspired. <laughs> I'm being inspired, maybe coping is, is too much. I'm not literally coping it for now. It's just, you know, getting a very, very big inspiration. Um, and our state machine should be something like, um, oh, we, we are, we start in a stopped state, go into a writing state. Yeah. Then we do, we have definitely the finished state. Um, well, we'll see if we need another one. I think we may need another one, but I don't know for now. Let's, let's see. Uh, I want to also make maybe some handy variation here. Mm. Yeah, something like this. So I can pass like a string. And maybe another one where I'm taking the a buffer. Actually a span. I use it parameter buffer ID. We need like a function that will need to be called back from, well, I, I can create it later. I don't, yeah, let, let's first create this. Let's create the in it. We need an async pool. Same, same, the same as the readable side. And we need a span of request that is our our queue. So write let's say requests requests write queue equals our request. So how is a request done? So it's it's a write request. Let's create struct request. In a request, we have I mean, have we have we been calling it request here for the queue? Oh no, we are doing directly async buffer ID. Yeah, this needs to become like a request object, something like this. Yeah, I will I will change it later. Well, this one in this case only has a single field, so probably it's an overkill, but in the writing side, I need two fields because I need to save also the callback. 
So yeah, but for symmetry, it's better to have a request on both sides. So I will do it. So this is a sync buffer I view ID buffer ID. And then I have a function, the callback, basically, this callback being passed in in the right, which is avoid async buffer view ID callback. So this is my, my right queue is basically on async, um, no, sorry, uh, queue, circular buffer, how did I, oh, I, oh, that's a terrible name. It should be more like circular queue. Oh, now it doesn't find circular queue. Um, yeah, let's rename it circular queue. Uh, generate projects. Circular queue, okay. Circular queue of request. Write queue. Um, yes, and you said parameter pool. Let's say we have an async pool uh, buffers. So buffers equals pool. Okay. So when we are writing, I think I want to be writing to the queue anyway, push back, request. My request will be buffer ID, buffer ID, and request callback will be our callback. So if we are able to push back, if we are not able to push back, yeah, we need an error state. Error add. Emit error. Yeah. Uh, on event error. Do we have an event error? Oh, on error, I called it. Let's call it event error. Or maybe should I call them on air? I don't know. Maybe at some point, if you see this video later, I will have refactored this to be on error. But for now, it's event error. Event error emit result. And so I want to emit error result dot error read write queue is exhausted state equals error state error oh there is no state why okay state state equals state stopped nice now we can just allocate something. So if buffers, um, yeah, let me create maybe even the variation with the span of char. So I have, well, this should be fallible for sure. Return result true and return result true. So if buffers get data, no, I want to request a new buffer. So result rest equal request new buffer buffer ID so I can allocate 
I will receive a buffer ID. Um, async buffer view ID. Buffer ID and minimum sides, it's sides of data sides in bytes. And my data is data. Yeah. No, should I? Yeah, I should be copying this data. So spawn char new data. Yeah, I cannot expect, well, requesting someone to handle, yeah, we should be copying the data. If someone doesn't want to copy the data, they need to allocate the buffer and write the buffer directly. So calling the write with the buffer ID uh, version. So this is buffer ID. Yes. Um, so if result return true, otherwise return result. And I need to um, copy destination new data dot data data dot data data size in bytes. And once I copy this, I need to just write. So this should be fallible as well, yes, because if the right queue is exhausted, also we don't need to be in the error state. Yeah, we can just return false so that the right will fail. Yeah, we make the right fallible. Yeah, that's that's how the API should behave. So return write buffer ID buffer ID CB and here I guess we are writing just str and and a CB. So if you pass like a string char literal it will get copied into a buffer mem copied and we will write into the queue this buffer id in which we have copied the string this will be written to the this write queue if we succeed writing it we should probably incrementing the ref count Yes. I mean, yeah, let's do it proper. So we do increment the ref count here. Here probably we need uh, we need a defer to decrement in case this fails. So let's do deferred. And I can say auto defer on ref equals this buffer ID. Um, buffers on ref buffer buffer ID. So if write fails equals make deferred with something like this. Okay, because here we create a buffer, we have a ref count one here, we do our, you know, good citizenship action of unrefing the buffer. And here, so that when basically this is failing, this buffer will be freed. Instead, if we are able to save it, this function has saved the buffer in the right queue, so it should 
unwrap it until this gets written and then it will be unwrapped and freed. Oh, if we keep things symmetric like this, this will be fine. Um, all right. Um, this is not going to be so simple. It will depend on the state. Let's say, yeah, let me add all of the states. Probably when we are stopped, if someone is asking us to end, yeah, we can just be finished. If we are finished, we should emit error. Uh, error already finished. Uh, we are in error state. And when we are writing, but yeah, we said we don't need the error state, you know, so let me remove the error state because we are not using it anymore. We need an ending state. Because when we are writing, we need to go in state ending. And yeah, we need to go in state ending. And once the basically the in flight write is done, it's finished, then we can emit the finished event. Okay. So if someone is calling end on something being ended, already ending. Okay. So we need our function um, void buffer async buffer view id um, async write function and and yes, now we need to have a method that the async write needs to call after it has finished writing something, which is called finish, finish writing. <laughs> we definitely need to have the buffer ID. Maybe let's also get the function. the callback function to call for the user to know that this has been finished at writing. And this is where we will do all of the state machine handling. So we will get a buffer ID. This buffer ID is finished writing. So the idea is that in, um, in our writable stream, we will have a uh, well, I want to write it later, but just to show you, let's say write double stream and we will have a write double stream dot async write. And this async write will be buffer ID and function void async buffer view ID. So I can uh, writable stream, writable stream dot finished writing buffer ID callback. So, you know, do the write. Oh, it's a private member. Well, I should not make it private, of course, but no matching function to call for which one uh, async write yes because we don't have the callback we don't have the callback so function void async buffer view id callback back 
what am I missing? Function void. So I think buffer view. Oh, there is one more. I use the parameter buffer ID. So yeah, if callback, we need to call it at some point. Um, but this is probably done later. What should we do once we finish writing? Um, what state are we in? We should be either in state writing or in state ending, right? Wrong, uh, unexpected state. Maybe we need like a try sync, void try async. Uh, I don't know. Well, that, that's all right. Let's, let's keep the assertion. Assert. Assert this for now. Why it's a state, not a thing? Oh, because I made it on. Yeah, wrong casing. So, finished writing. I mean, so I should be in state writing or ending. If state equals state. What should I do here? I finish it writing. So I need to take one more request from the write queue. So if write queue pop front request, request, request. Um, Okay. Request, so we have something in the queue. We need to, yeah, that's where we need to call async write request.bufferID, request.callback. The async write can fail, right? We need to make it fallible result. We need to make it so that, that it can fail. So, yeah, let's do a try async, yeah. I knew that we are going to need it because if not rest, emit error rest. So we can try async, async write. Hmm. Or maybe not, we don't even need it to result rest. Well, it's not so important. If rest, then what state are we in? We are in writing state. We keep being in writing state. So maybe we should need an error state. I don't know. I have to decide. Otherwise, if there is nothing in the right queue, then we need to emit train. So let's say bool emit train equals zero, false. Emit train equals true. We invoke the callback and if emit train, then event train emit. 
because we have nothing in the queue so we can emit the train event which means we don't have anything in the queue otherwise um, here we should probably be able to arrive also in ending state as we said so in either case if state is ending I guess state can be made ended but after we invoke the callback so if Mm. Yeah. But this can happen on only here, right? No. I mean, it can happen. We have both the train and the ending state. Okay, so we need to check the ending state first. So if we are in ending state, we make the state ended and we say event finished emit. Otherwise we emit the train event. Uh, state finished. Okay. This looks something that you can start testing. So if we, yeah, if we get a, an end, ending request while we, we are writing, we will go in the ending state. So at some point we will go into finished writing. And if state is ending, we become finished here. So it looks, looks decent, yeah. Um, Hmm. So we should be back in stopped state here. Okay. State equals stopped. We are stopped. Instead, if the write queue has some data, we will just do another write and we will be again in writing state. Okay, this looks something we can start writing a test on. So we'll create some buffers in the same way in which we have created them here. Even the buffer pool. writable stream dot init pull here we have a set of requests so we have yeah async writable stream request requests they should be as many as the buffer at the very minimum so maybe I should be adding a check in init and so it's a good idea to make the init as in a way that it can fail. Um, okay. Now let's create some sort of context where I will definitely need to have a sync writable stream. Equals writable stream. And maybe I can have a string. Let's concatenate maybe some some characters. Uh, concatenated string. So I can do like writable stream dot write one callback. Um, 
I don't know what I should be putting as callback for the test. Let's say let's let's first make sure to listen to the event error. Add listener result res test expect res. Uh, oh, we don't have a string here. Well, let me add an include for string builder then. Complete type string. Why is it incomplete? It doesn't string builder have a string as well? Yeah. Missing field initializer. Okay, we can do the test expect here. So we are writing our first character. Probably I should also make this default. Like this. No matching member function, why? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, we can make it const char. Yeah, because we don't need to write to it. That's that's fine. So write one, write two, and not. Actually, I need to make this plus one. And not three. If you remember from the last video, the Circular queue is making is keeping one slot as a kind of a boolean to say if the queue is empty or or free. So we if we if we make two slots, we can only use one. So we need to make three slots in order to use two. So the third slot will not will just not work. Let's see. Okay, this is what we expect. Now, so the right should be taking the context and let's say concatenated string, let's see, uh, string builder append. some string view okay so we concatenate all of the characters we are writing that's very stupid stream but it shows the the point but I don't want to invoke the writable here I want to invoke it here when I need it Uh, oh, I need the buffer ID, right? So let me put the buffer ID here. Buffer ID. So context dot buffer ID equals buffer ID. And context.callback. Yeah, let me save them in the context so that I can invoke them in the test. So context.callback equals callback. So finished writing. 
so at this point I should be able so my first expectation is that even if I wrote successfully one and two, two has been queued. Actually, one has been written. One should be written directly, but it doesn't get the finished writing. So it will occupy one slot in the right queue. The second slot in the right queue will be occupied by the two. This one will not make it into the right queue, so it will fail. So now my concatenated string equals just one, right? Then I can say finished writing. This should be pushing the number two into the right queue. So as soon as I do that, this becomes one, two. And now, I can, I can finally write three, but this will still be one, two, because I still need to do finished writing in order to make this one, two, three. Something like that. So we are not even arriving here because I suspect we are not calling the async right. We, we are calling the async right only here. Yeah, let's use the try async. Try async, but we also need to do it in the right. So we push into the right buffer and then we say async right, correct? No. Depends on the state. We need to check the state. Switch state. So, what states can we be in? We have four states for now. If we are stopped, we can. Oh, we cannot even use this because this may not be the correct buffer to to push. We need to pop the buffer in the same way as we do down, down here. Yeah. Right queue pop front. So if we are able to, I mean, we must be able to pop because we had just pushed something. So this is guaranteed. We can even assert this, this will never, this assertion will never happen, will never be hit because we are just writing here, we are pushing into the queue just before arriving here. So now we have updated request buffer ID and callback. And once we write, we can say buffer unref buffer request buffer ID. Instead, if we are in the writing, it's fine. We already queued the buffer to write. If we are in ending state or in finished state, I think we should be writing an error for now. That's what I believe is the most correct thing to do, but we'll revisit. Emit error result. wrong state. Oh, my keyboard is going to Italian mode. All right. How long is this video? One hour and 10. Well, 
If this works, we should be close to the end of the video. Let's see. So right tree is succeeding, which is correct because the first right will be now with the changes that I have just made will write to the queue, but they will pop immediately because we are in stopped state. That's correct. So even if we have just two slot, we are using slot zero, slot one. No, we are not even using a slot, no slot use. It's slot one, slot two. This will still be just one, finish writing will free one slot and push the next right forward. So this should be like this. So here we free a slot. Here we have another slot. Well, I don't need all of these slot comments, but this, this is just for me for now to understand if what I'm doing makes sense. We are still not hitting this concatenated string. Why are we even arriving here? Okay, we are arriving. Oh yes, because I'm not extracting the data. So I should say context.writable stream. We need to also here get buffers to access the buffers pool. Async buffers pool get buffers return buffers. And so I'm um, get buffers, get data, buffer ID, and data, span, and does str, yeah, we don't have access to the span. Okay, so span char data, actually we need a const char data. We can actually try this. Yes, we don't have a. Yeah, we don't have a const version of this one. Const chart data. So span chart uh, mutable data. Get data buffer ID mutable data. And then we can say data equals mutable data return result true. Will it work? Yeah, looks like it works. So we get the data um, append data. This should be no matching member function. Um, okay. Uh, data data size in bytes uh, string encoding ASCII we don't care S cannot be uh, why it's a bull oh yeah this is just if it's not terminated well let's say false just for just to be sure, I mean, we don't know if it's going to be an all terminated. Uh, you know what, here we should probably, so here we are receiving the buffer with the null terminator, right? So it's definitely null terminated but we need to slice start zero data sides elements minus one yeah that's not super solid i don't want to do all of these uh i don't know let's do this i think it will fail so what is context concatenated string yeah, the zero <laughs> is causing problems. So we need to do 
data dot data data dot size in bytes minus one is our string what we expect yeah now it's one Oh, we are getting a second. Who is calling this? Uh, yeah, that, that's a problem. Okay. State equals state writing. We need to go in writing state. And this writing state should no. So the error here, and that's you know the test was not working, is that it cannot happen that async write is called again until we say we are finished writing with a previous uh, from a previous write operation. So let's say if this is now working, right? We are here. Then we write again. Yes. Let's go forward. So context concatenated string one two fail no buffer available for four which is weird because finished writing okay finished writing Finish writing should be releasing the buffer reference so that it can be made available for subsequent writes. Okay, guys, this works. Um, I'm happy. Yes, this is exactly what should be doing. So, you know, we write one, we queue two, we queue three, write is not even going into the queue. So even if we have just two, two slots, which is num buffers plus one, because the, the circular queue, formerly circular buffer class needs to have one more element to keep track of empty and full state. So we will end up just with one, but once we finish writing so let's say this is an asynchronous operation and happens later that's what i'm simulating with the test then immediately whatever it's in the in the next write um in the write queue will get written so we get one two we have now one more slot available we can write something else we can buffer something else and so on so this looks nice uh, I mean, I guess we can say at some point, just finish writing and this will become one, two, three, four. Um, and then we can say end. Maybe we should make end accept a buffer so that that becomes the last buffer. I can probably change the API to be like this. Not now, because this video is already really long, so I think I will take care of some of these details offline. Let's see. I don't know if, if they are not so relevant details, I would do them offline. If they are bigger um, items that, you know, really would be cool to show in a video, I will, I will show them in the video. And then that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, this was a little bit long, but you know, we did many things and I hope you enjoyed it. So see you next time with C++ libraries. Bye.